One of my Patreon supporters gave me this little Etco Emmerich tapping head a while back, and ever since I got it, I've wanted to get a bigger one. This one will do up to 5 16 in aluminum or a quarter inch in mild steel, which is super handy, but I'd like to be able to do bigger holes too. So, when I found this one laying in the dirt at an industrial salvage place, I figured I'd take a chance on it. You could say this one is procuny, this one is just that much procunier. Look, some of my viewers say they like my humor, so if you don't, blame them for encouraging me. This thing was totally locked up, but I clamped the tang in the vise, gave it a couple back and forths, and it freed up pretty well. Gotta give kudos to the guy that zip-tied the tag back on there. Thanks for that. I think the thing to do is break this down and uh, clean it up and see how she comes out. That whole stud is spinning, so it must be attached to something loose inside, a nut or something. Okay, that's loose. There you go. Boom. Well, when all else fails, read the instructions. Use bent wire, slide clutch pin out of clutch, remove clutch. Okay. Oh, there we go. Look, if you're an engineer, don't design things like this. Sprawling. There's a real small burr in the hole in that cross shaft. Pull this clutch basket off just so I can clean that up. Well, that just totally fell out and fell on the floor. So this is the tricky part here, is getting this flange off. It's threaded onto the shank, right there. You can make a special wrench that would bolt on there, or if you're careful, you can use the drive shell. A little bit of heat's gonna help too, I think.
Got this pretty beat up Morse Taper 2 to 3 sleeve. I think we'll beat it up a little more. I don't know why anyone would ever choose to paint a machine shop tool this color because it's going to be smudged up and greasy and terrible looking by the end of this video, but that's what color it was, so we're going to go with it. The rust on most of this stuff really isn't too bad, so I'm just going to use a little vinegar. There were a couple little burrs inside the clutch shell that I want to take off with some emery. This paint was taking a really long time to set up, so I fired up the toaster oven and baked it at 250 Fahrenheit. This also gives me a chance to drop in my freshly repacked bearing. The bearing's getting pretty warm now too. I think I can get this in here just right. The screw will hit against the chuck jaw and serve as a drive dog to spin the shell. You know, I gotta admit, this thing is pretty disappointing. 
There's really nothing on here that I need to fix or replace or make any new parts out of old scrap metal. It's really in good shape. How am I supposed to make a ridiculous restoration video like this? I mean, really all I need to do is put it back together. All kidding aside, I think the way this thing held up to being outside is just a testament to how well it was made originally. I guess there's a reason these things are like $1,400 new. Before I button this thing up, let's look at how this mechanism works. Under normal operation, when this is feeding down and pushing up, it's pushing this clutch up into the surface in this drive shell, giving it direct drive. When you go to pull the tap out and pull up on it, it pulls the clutch down, disengages from this shell, and engages in this one, which is driven by the planetary gears down there, driven by this ring gear, reverses it at double the speed. Pretty cool. We'll kind of clock it in like that, so when this is against the mill column, you'll be able to see the tag. I'm sure that's how they would want it. I picked up some of the collets for this off of eBay. Quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, half inch. Kind of the sizes I think I'll use most. I can always get more later. This is probably also a good time to talk about machine taps. You don't want to use a regular hand tap in one of these because it's just not going to go well. You either want to use a spiral point tap or a spiral flute tap. I have a few of them. need to pick up some more. All that's left to do now is try her out. Now we get to see the one big drawback with this, which is just the massive amount of space it takes up. Well, it didn't like that tap in steel. Let's try a spiral point tap. I'll run that back down one more time for demonstration purposes. So that's pretty cool. For minimal effort, that thing came out really great. I still want to make something out of scrap metal. One of the problems I have is I keep acquiring tools like this and don't have anywhere to put them, so let's do something about that.
I better be careful here or someone's going to mistake me for someone who's organized. Thanks for watching.